Okay. What were your findings regarding certain earlier texts that have the letter pay before the ayin? Okay. So, you know, I worked on this for many, many years, really 20 years, and uh, it ended up actually, so there's a long article in the Esther and Math book, you know, a very long, subtle article. But before that, I even have an article in Biblical Archaeology Review, which has pictures. Okay, so it's in the it's in the July 2012 issue. And my book doesn't have pictures, so the article in Biblical this Biblical Archaeology Review is way too short, but it has wonderful pictures. Okay, so after you buy that strong map, then you, you know you're going to dig out this, uh, this, this that journal. Okay, anyway, so the uh, yeah you know, the starting point in here is the Book of Echa. The Book of Echa has five chapters, right? The four of them are crosses. So all right, so the first four chapters of a horror crossings, but the weird thing is that in chapters two, three, and four, the pay verse is before the iron verse. And chapter one is in the regular order. So this really raises two issues, right? Why do you have a pay before the iron? And how come you don't even have consistency in the same book, right? I mean, it, you know, I couldn't sleep nights. This problem, two problems, right? And then there's one other weird thing. The, the Asia's Kyle is, you know, we have Greek versions of Nah. In uh, Mishle chapter 31, which is Asia's Chayel, that's an acrostic. In the Greek, they had the pay verse before the I verse. So this is very strange, right? And, you know, these Greek texts, they're like from year 400, which is like 600 years before Hebrew te- or Hebrew text. So these are very old Greek texts. Why in the world would they have the pay before the I? Okay, so, so this is the way it was. No one knew the answer. You know, Sino, it, it wrote in 1946, you know, it has never been explained. But basically, now we can explain it all, and it all has tremendous ramifications for the Book of Tehillim, which is full of a cross. Okay, so that's the goal here. We're just going to start out with the Book of Acha, but the end result is we're going to have insights into the Book of Tehillim. Okay, so it started, like in 1976, they found something in Israel in a, in a place called Izbet Sarta. It's like 1200 BCE, and someone wrote all the letters of the alphabet in order. You know, this is in 1200 BCE. You know, this is it's if it started, it's like near Tel Aviv. It's, it's you know what it re- where it really is. It's, it's in told in the Tanakh, but Eben HaEzer, to where the, the, the Israelites fought, fought with the Philistines, and the Philistines captured the Ark. So you know, it's, it's somewhere in, in that area, um, you know, in e- east of Tel Aviv, and they call it Western Samaria. But even Western Samaria is still, you know, still close to the beach and the Israel so narrow there. But anyway, this place is at Sarah, 1200 BC, someone writes all the letters in order, and he has a pay before the eye. So this, you know, was very, really very intriguing. Um, actually, what's also interesting is that he actually, this is actually uh, left to right. This is like so early that the direction of writing is even different. But okay, but anyway, but, but scholars there, they know that Isbet Sartre was an Israelite place. So this person, Right old letter in order, and he has a pay before the eye. And they found this in 1976, and then every few years they would find another one. Not that they have a hundred of them, but basically, you know, they have like six of them where they have the pay before the eye, and some of them, you know, triple bit, you know, all over Israel. Okay, so basically, anytime anybody writes the Hebrew alphabet in order in the, you know, in the first temple period or the period of Shokim, they're always writing the pay before the eye. Okay? So, what, you know, so, so what's going on, right? So now, now comes this, this dramatic moment, okay? The dramatic moment is Tehillim 34, Ladavid Bashanoto. So we all say this, you know, every show we say it years and years, but we don't pay enough attention. So in the, in the pay verse, Ne Hashem Ba'osei God looks at those evil people. He wants to cut off the memory from the earth. Right? He hates them so much. He wants to cut off the memory. What's the next verse? And he calls her Sam Hitilan. He hates them in the paper. Then in the Saudi verse, he's saving them. Just like that. No explanation whatsoever. So, you look at the dot Mikra, they realize this verse, they didn't, they didn't even have any of the archaeology that I just mentioned. They realized, based on Acha, that this verse will make much more sense if this was a, if this was a pay eye and why. Because then, in the pay verse, he hates the Rishon, and then the eye is, a Hashem outside of Kim as an Abu Shabbatam, 
So I prove Hashem Shemaya, and call to Hashem, keep you on. With me, I mean, this is like very, very profound. All of a sudden, it makes perfect sense. Well, you know, and again, Don Mikra, they, they, they didn't even have any archaeology, but they, based on Asa, they, they kind of suggested this shot. But once you accept that this was the real reading in Tilm 34, you have to take the next step, right? The next step is, what about all the other acrostics in the book of Asa? Right? So, so basically, the book of Asa is divided into five books. This is a very old division, okay? And the, the first book is 1 to 41. The fifth book is uh, 107 to 150. The acrostics are only in the first book and in the fifth book. Okay, so making a life a little bit easy for us. They're not spread out throughout the whole book. They're only in the first book, 1 to 41, and in the fifth book. Okay, so basically you have a few acrostics in the first book and a few in the fifth book. So now, see, once you agree that Tehillim 34 only makes sense with the K before the I, and you know, then you got to figure out what to do with the rest. And and again, all the archaeology, all the archaeology finds from from by we showed it earlier, they all have the K before the I. So eventually, I realized, you know, in Tehillim 119, every letter is repeated eight times. So I realized that I could never suggest that that was once. I pay iron and then someone switched eight letters. I would, you know, that would be ridiculous. But that made me realize that I should focus on the first book, the acrostics in the first book, and I realized that that's probably the solution, that the acrostics in the first book are the older ones from by Rishon, from, or from Dalton, either from Dalton Melaf or by Rishon, whatever. Whereas the ones in, the ones in the fifth book, those are really the later ones. So, so I'm, basically, I'm, I, basically, I figured out that the order probably changed, you know, around, uh, if due to Gaulus Bravo. I'll explain more in a few minutes. But that's basically what, what, what's going on here, that there was an original order, and then the, the order changed uh, due to Gaulus Bravo. Now, I, you know, I have to explain a lot more things here. So, uh, so, so, first of all, let me just say, you know, in English, we have LMNOP, right? So that's I and K. That OP, right? But where does that come from? So, even though I told you that in ancient Israel everything had paid for iron, but in, in Ugaritic from 1300 BCE, that's Syria, they had iron pay. So you see, in this, you know, in this old period of, you know, 1200, 1300 BCE, in, in Syria, Ugaritic, they have iron pay, but in ancient Israel, they have pay iron. So just just realize that, okay, that there were two different orders um, in the, in very ancient times. Okay, and and these, basically what I'm gonna you know look, I'll I'll just say it right now. You see, I think what happened was when the Jews went to go to Babel, then they picked up the other order. See, the Jews picked up a lot of things in Babel, like the names of the months, also the, the the shape of the letters changed. You know, let me just say quickly, you know, the Gemara says that there was a change in the time of Ezra. It's not that simple. They were really it was really like a change, you know, one thing went to Babylon, and then the next change is really from like the Greek period. So, so the, it's really like three, three different kinds of writing. You know, the Old Hebrew, and then something like the cursive, and then only really in the Greek period did they really have the square script that we have today. So the point is that, you know, I'm saying that I, I think what happened here is that the, um, the iron order, uh, got switched to I and K once the Jews uh, went to Bravo, and again, that's, you know, a lot of other things changed in that period as well. Okay. Now, what I have to explain is, see, you already did Tillum 34, so now there's another cross that can tell them 37. Well, so before I forget, but let me, I have to a few things. For me to say it's the fifth book of Tehillim is, is from early by Cheney, you know, language scholars have kind of figured that out already because there's someone named Avi Hervitz, he, he studies the language of Tehillim, and he says you can distinguish in early Tehillim and late Tehillim. You know, in the fifth book, that's where they have phrases like al Nawaz Babel, Shiva Sion. So, you know, it's, it's, and, and even, even, um, there's, there, are, even though the Baba Vatra talks about Davida people earlier, him, there are, in Shir Shiram Rabbah and in Kohelet Rabbah, they mentioned Ezra, one of the ten people. So again, even though everybody thinks about David and ten earlier people, but, in Shir Shem Rabbah and Gohelet Rabbah, they mentioned Ezra as one of the ten people. So, 
the idea that you know parts of Pilum are from early Byzantine is not, is not so radical. So radical. Mm. So, but now let me just go back to uh, the, the, the acrostics in uh, the beginning. So, so 34 we already did. What about Pilum 37? See, we never talked about 37. It's not as part of the dominant. So, so if if you agree that Pilum 34 was really table for iron, and if you agree that uh, that the K variety was really the original order. So what happens in Tome 37? So what's the order in Tome 37? It's very interesting. You know what the order is? There's no I inverse. Did you know that? There's no I inverse there. Oh, I never noticed. And what's more, uh, my friend Sam Board, I pointed this out to me once. He told me, oh, the Samach verse is too long. You know, there's a certain, you know, normal length in, in each, within each chapter. So basically, there, there's some kind of something went wrong here, and you think it's just coincidence that it happened with letter I. No, it must be, must be. I mean, not must be, but I mean, I think that it was originally a pay I, and whoever was copying it was used to I and pay, and that kind of messed them up. Mm. So that's you know, that, it's not just coincidence that you have a problem in, on this letter. Okay, All right. So that's Tome 37. Now, in Hill, there's another long acrostic. 9 cash 10 is an acrostic which runs through both chapters. Okay. Now it has many letters missing, but basically it's an acrostic which, which does have a few letters missing. And already a hundred years ago, some scholars have kind of suggested this was really once a, a pay I. So, all right. So scholars had already suggested that, that, that the one in 9 dash 10 was already a pay I. Um, until in 37, I told you, uh, you know, the text is missed. It's a little bit messed up. So I, I tried to explain the reason why. And then basically, I had to come up with a spara for Tehillim 25. It took me, a, you know, a few years to come up with a spara, but eventually I figured out a spara why Tehillim 25 also could be pay I. I don't want to go into it now, but you, know, you, you read the book, you'll, you'll see what I, you'll see what I said. Um, but what I do want to say is, so, okay, so basically, so that's what I decided that, you know, um, that, uh, that the, the, the book, the acrostics in the first book were really from, you know, early times, whereas the acrostics in the fifth book are from, you know, from early by chain. Now I want to say something else about Aceus Hyo. We have to go back to Aceus Hyo because I told you the Greek, the Greek manuscripts from 400, year 400, um, they have to pay before the iron. So what's going on here? They must have been copying from an old Hebrew, which had to pay. Oh, I forgot to mention, by the way, before I forget that, before I, I forgot to mention something very important. The Dead Sea of Ava chapter one had to pay before nine. See, I started off, I said, I started off the share, I said, hey, we have two problems. I said two, three, four, and I paid for I, and chapter one's in the regular order. But then, all of a sudden, when they, you know, the Dead Sea shows were discovered, but the stuff was not really publicized for decades. So when it finally got publicized, you know, which is, you know, years later, so it's, that chapter one had to pay I in office. So we have, we now have, you know, consistent pay I in, in the, in the Dead Sea. Uh, consistent pay iron in, Eifa, in the Eicha. But now what about the Aceus Hyo? So, again, the, the, the reason the Greek, the Greek translation has a pay for iron, they must be copying from a Hebrew which had the pay for the iron. Now, the way we say today, we say, we say, um, why does she, we say, uh, one second, Tishaf Yom Macron, right. We say, always my daughter, who shall have a Tishaf Yom Macron. At the end of days, she, she's, she's happy at the end of days. Why? He goes, Oh, the Pardar Lavusha. Alright? What's, what's before that? Before that is something about buying clothing and buying a belt. Like, you know, something about the clothing and belts. And then it says, Oh, the Pardar Lavusha. And she's happy at the end of days based on, you know, Oh, the Pardar Lavusha. But once you realize this was originally a pay eye, and then all of a sudden, Tord Chesed al so she has Chachma. She has Chesed, and then Oz Mahadar and Lusha, Tisaf Yom Acharon. So all of a sudden, that Yom Acharon becomes the culmination to a much more uh, profound uh, set of, of statements. Uh, so you're suggesting that the right order, it, it should actually be flipped? I'm, I'm saying that, yes, I mean, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Because it flows, it flows, it flows and, better. And Maybe I'll try that this Friday. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, I'm That's not making this up. This is the Greek manuscript from 400 from 400 CE has the table for the iron. So it's not these things are not are not just uh, coincidence. But, so interesting. You, you know, the, uh, there is a Gemara on this topic. You know, there is a brief Gemara 
they only talk about it. You know, they're not aware, they're not aware about the, you know about the Greek manuscripts of of, of Mishle. They they say the Marazon put their pay before the iron. But you know, but that doesn't explain why the first chapter. It doesn't explain the. Uh, it doesn't explain the inconsistency between the first chapter and chapters two, three, and four. And and the book of Echa really, on on the simple level, doesn't really have to do with the Marazon. So you you know you can't just read Marazon in, into there. So well, what's interesting is that this kind of uh, pokes holes in. Can I drink gem, in Gematria? Gematria. I, that's how, right. I said elephant that at the end of my article. Elephant in the room. That's this whole room. time. No, that no, elephant no, in the room. I, that's, that's how I ended my article. My, that's how I ended my article in the Esther Amash. I said, okay, you know, I, I, I just, I solve this problem, I solve this problem, but I'll leave the, the impact on Gematria to somebody else. But I want, <laughs> but I want to tell you, I gave this year in my school once, right? And, um, it was happened to be, it was like a special Shabbos. It was the, uh, it was like the OU Women's Division and it was, oh, right. She said it was, right, we had a guest for Shabbos. She said it's old. It was like, you know, the, the 77th year. Of, of the OU women's journey. So I said, all right, so it'll just be pause, go, right? So, you know, it's like, it, 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 it damages some gematria, but it, it enables, enables new ones. Of course. Um, okay. It's the beauty of gematria is you can really just make it fit for anything. No, okay, all right. All right. But, <laughs> but anyway, okay, so, so, all right, do you have any questions? Uh, do you have any questions on what, what I, I did here? Um, no, no questions. It's really fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, but here, let me just what's it, can I let, can I can I say one thing here? Just, yeah, please. sure, of course. Let me just hit. Hey, let me say what what my sparrow was for Helen twenty five. Maybe you'll, you'll you'll like it. Okay, because it, it's it's really it took me a long time to figure this out. So you know the whole this whole thing starts with you have to you have to be agreeing with what I did in Helen thirty four about the Rosham and the Tzadik. You know what I mean? But you know. So once you agree with that, right? So that's you know that's why we're you know, trying to take the next step. So Helen thirty four has a pay verse at the end, right? Kodeshem nefshavadav. Right? This is very weird. Why does it have this whole acrostic with a pay verse at the end? Right? I mean, I don't, I don't know if you think about this, but I don't know what a good answer to that. And then there's really no vav verse, even though the article kind of the article kind of creates a vav verse. They take the hay verse and chop it into two, and they make like this. You know, as if it's a three-word vav verse, but really, uh, Tilm 34 has no vav verse, and it has a pay verse at the end. Okay, and you know why does it have no vav verse? Again, you know, vav is a weird letter in Hebrew. You know, like no roots start with vav. I mean, you know, if you look at the monotones and coordinates, basically, there's like almost no entries for vav. So something unusual about the letter vav. But what's interesting is so so Tilm 25. Also has no above verse and it has a pay at the end. So it's not just Tilm 34 that has no above verse and a pay at the end. Tilm 25 has the same thing, no above verse and a pay at the end. You know, today I look him at Israel, the cold source stuff. So I kind of realized that, you know, probably if, if you grant that Tilm 34 really was one to pay iron. Then probably Tilm 25 was written, you know, in the same community, and that must have been a pay too, because you can't, you can't, I'm sure there was not like so many different variants. So again, it's so unusual that Tilm 34 has a pay verse, an extra pay verse at the end, and no above, and Tilm 25, uh, you know, the same thing, an extra pay verse at the end, and no above. So I think that it, it must have had that pay too, even though I, even though I can't prove it. Absolutely yeah. fascinating. That was, that was amazing. Great so, stuff. So uh, before we go, um, can you tell our listeners where they can find you? Right. So, okay. Uh, so, you know, I I like to understand the ancient world. So that's why I, I keep my AOL address. So M first A-T-T-Y at AOL.com. Okay. That's me. M first A-T-T-Y at AOL.com. You know, in my day job, I'm a personal injury attorney. I represent people who get involved in accidents. But I'm, email, I'm able to have this whole other uh, life on the side, you know, for several decades already. And, you know, I write, this is what I do also is I write articles every week in the Jewish Link in New Jersey. And, uh, now I turn them into books. So, like, I, you know, aside from, I already mentioned uh, two of my books, right? The Jewish History and Conflict and the Esther and Math. But now I write these weekly columns and I have one book, Roots and Rituals, and I have another one, Links to Our Legacy. You know, I take 60 of these short articles and, and I make them into books. And, uh, wow. And it's really, uh, before we go, I just want to say that, it's very important what you do because you're really trying to 
get to the bottom of a lot of the issues that people usually neglect or push off for somebody else to, to deal with. So, and it's not an easy thing to do because obviously they are, by definition, controversial These are topics. Difficult, difficult, and difficult, questions. and people are very, uh, you know, sensitive about certain things. But the truth of the matter is, you're trying your best to come up with solutions. And you know, solutions that that make sense. Right. Oh, thank you. So thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Great job. I really enjoy your articles, and I highly suggest your books to all our audience. Thank you okay. very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.